Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Uh, today's session is going to be all about Beaver Connections and giving you an introduction to that. Uh, as a very quick introduction, I'm Mike Williams uh, from WM Reply. We do also have Chris Stoss, who's currently sitting down over there, and he's going to be supporting with uh, some parts of the presentation as well. Uh, but yeah, today we're two technical consultants here to talk to you about Viva, give you a very brief oversight of what Microsoft Viva is and the employee experience, and then dive into the Viva Connections app itself. Uh, this is part of a wider range of webinars, so there will be lots of others going on for the different Viva modules. Uh, so today I'll try and keep it very focused, but um, yeah, we can talk about some of the other ones coming up in the future too. Uh, but very quickly, just a quick agenda for the day. Uh, like I said, we'll be going through the employee experience, what Viva is. Uh, we'll be doing a very quick demo with you just to show you guys how we're seeing it used in the real world. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about some case studies and then we'll have some time at the end to go through some questions. Cool. So let's start with what the employee experience actually is. Um, Ultimately, employee experience, it is a collection of experiences that we all have at work. Uh, it used to just be coming to your job, and sometimes that workday could be quite monotonous, uh, and there wasn't too much else to it. But over the years, people's attitudes have changed, trends have changed, and people are looking for more and have higher expectations out of their jobs. Uh, and that's where this, this term employee experience really did come from. Um, and it's about kind of taking our day-to-day -day jobs and turning it into something that's a bit more inspiring, motivating and productive for our employees. And there's been, yeah, lots of studies as well that have been, happened kind of throughout the recent years, especially through COVID uh, and since the introduction of things like hybrid working, remote working, uh, it's becoming more and more important that we'll start to learn and we see some figures in the set why it's not important to, to people and why we all have these expectations for a good employee experience, uh, but also why it is actually massively beneficial to, to companies as well. So, like I said, over the years, there's been some uh, studies going on uh, and employees now have their, this new worth it equation, as they call it. Um, and we've seen different global trends emerge over the years, things like the great reshuffle, quiet quitting. Um, and basically this era now of great expectations where people are not just concerned about how they work, but it's, it's why they work as well. Um, and, you know, when they come into work, they want to make sure they are actually getting some value from it too. It's not just about going home with that paycheck anymore. It's about all the other things that come with it. Um, and there's some interesting facts up there, um, which, are, which are pretty strong, um, you know, about people wanting to be into the office so they can actually socialize the people. Um, people thinking that we don't get enough feedback anymore. Uh, and, and lots of other things as well, like saying, you know, people would rather stay at the organization. 76% of employees wanted to stay at the organization if they had better learning and development support. So, and a couple more really strong figures here and why, like I said, employee experience is not just about, you know, us as individuals just wanting to, to have a better time at work. It's actually the impact it's having on businesses as well. So crazy stat, but apparently only 15% of employees are actually engaged at work, which is pretty low. I don't know how people in the room feel about that, but uh, it's quite a low stat. But then when you compare that to, to what you get with good engagement, so... Highly engaged employees are 12 times less likely to leave their company than those who are not engaged. And then also organizations who do have highly engaged employees, well, tend to have much greater profitability. So when you kind of bring all them points together, you start to realize that, you know, it's, it's actually very effective for organizations to start to invest in some of these tools as well and look at introducing employee experience. And, and that's why we're having this great shift, this great trend. Um, and we're looking to educate you know, people and organizations to realize that it is important and these are some, some tools and things you should start investing in and think about how you do actually look after your, your people at work. So uh, just a couple of pillars here, but so we know a little bit about what employee experience is and it's about how we want to be, you know, inspired, motivated, productive at work. Uh, but what is the employee experience platform? Well, really it's, again, a new emerge of technologies that have come up over the years where uh, organizations now are looking to, to really look at how we can use technology and digitalization to, to build an em employee experience. Um, lots of people are now working from home. Uh, so it's not just a case of doing things in the office anymore to build that, that culture, that thriving culture. 
uh, we need to start thinking about how we can we can reach people who are frontline workers, people who who aren't in the office, people who might live quite far away, uh, and that's where this this digital platform comes into play. So there's lots of different pillars up there, which kind of you'll see when we look at some of the technology like Microsoft Viva, how it correlates with what we think employee experience actually is. So things like insights and well-being, people now care a lot more about their health. They don't want to work crazy hours. They don't want to kind of slave themselves away just for some money. Uh, they want to make sure that they're actually being treated well at work. Their well-being is being considered. They aren't working crazy hours. They do have a life outside of work. And then kind of as we go through the different things, you'll see things like learning and development. We all want to kind of keep building, developing. We want to have some purpose in our roles, uh, right through to things like being aligned with our organizations as well. So people do actually care for a lot of these companies they work for, and they do want to be part of that mission and journey. But unfortunately, I think over the, you know, historically and traditionally, there was quite a big disconnect between um, organizations and people and ensuring that the right people are kind of coming on that journey with them. So when you bring all of these together, um, this is kind of the main pillars people, people are looking for. And everything is people centric at the end of the day, organizations only work when the people are there to make it work. So we need to look for opportunities and how we can ensure that uh, we can get these people engaged, we can give them a positive experience, uh, and we can continue to make our own organizations thrive as well. So with that in mind, uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Microsoft Viva, as mentioned. Um, for those that might not have heard of it, uh, it's part of the Microsoft 365 suite. So um, I'm sure most of you will know what this is, but just in case there's anyone who's not quite too sure, Microsoft 365 is your suite of applications that most of us use in our day-to-day -day job. So things like Office, Outlook, Teams, those, those applications we spend way too much of our lives in. Uh, they kind of all make up what we call Microsoft 365. And Microsoft Viva is one of the more recent introductions to that. So that is Microsoft's answer to employee experience. And it's a suite of tools, applications, and individual apps that effectively address some of those pillars and, and issues that we've that have been recognized over time that, that make up employee experience. I'm not going to deep dive into all of these, but if you're wondering what all those colored icons are on the screen, they're all the different applications that serve different purposes. So things from building, you know, communication platforms, um, having things like Beaver Engage, which is a social network for your organization, right through to things like insights, where you can ensure that well-being is being considered uh, through to things like learning and topics, you know, building knowledge management centers for your organizations, uh, building learning platforms for people to continue their development on. Uh, but I can't talk about them in too much detail because there are going to be other webinars coming up. Um, so I don't want to be stepping on anyone's toes. But today's experience presentation will be all about Viva Connections, um, which really is the gateway to your modern internet. And ultimately, it's the thing that ties all of this together. Connections is about bringing everything into one place. Since we now live in a world where information and applications and digital saturation is a real thing where we have so many different tools we now have to interact with. Um, it can sometimes become overwhelming, difficult. There's information everywhere. And it's, it's, it's thinking about how can we bring this into a central space that's easy for people to actually find. Um, we don't want to be trolling through tons of applications. We don't want to be spending hours and hours searching for information. We want to make our lives easy. We want to have everything in the palm of our hands or when we log on in the morning, we want to just see the information that's actually important to us. And that's what Connections really is trying to address. And it's trying to empower employees to, to be able to do their jobs right and find exactly what it is they need. So Viva Connections, <clears throat> before we do jump into that, um, again, just a couple of really, really quick stats um, around engagement and how we engage people virtually. So, this is just a really quick question to the room. Some of you might have seen this, but if you could guess how many, what percentage of people would you say feel up to date on company news in their organizations? What would you say? 50%, you are 50%. What about you guys? Do you think you're up to date with news? 20, solid number, it's 26%. Um, so yeah, and based on that, we can see that, you know, we know from the studies happening that people want to be involved and they want to be aligned with their organizations. They want to be on that mission with them. 
But ultimately, if people don't even know what's going on in their companies, their organizations, then how, how is that ever going to happen? Um, do you know, on average, the amount of different business critical applications someone might use? And it's 51. So, yeah, from a study, it's a lot. Um, and it does seem to be growing all the time. I think we all, a lot of us work in technology and we, we see that there's, there's so much out there. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a very large number. There's lots of applications that individuals are using. And again, it can be draining, search trawling through all of these and searching for information. So it's thinking about how can we actually try and, if not condense that, just make it easier to get to what we want and target things and, and you know, make things much easier to find. Uh, and we already talked about this one, but if you weren't listening, it is 15%. Um, that's the amount of people who feel engaged at work at the moment. So Viva Connections, what can it do for us? Um, and what are we looking to address by, by introducing this into organizations? So just at the surface, in terms of what Viva Connections is, um, a lot of us use Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft has recognized this has now become the kind of core application, the central tool we use for most of our collaboration. We come in there to, to chat with people, to do calls, to have meetings, to collaborate on documents. So it's thinking about what else can we bring into this central hub that can make it easy to find that information we need. So Viva Connections ultimately is looking at kind of being that gateway between teams and the rest of your, your internet experience and modern experience and bringing some of that key information like news, um, like your key applications, uh, like conversations across the, across the organizations you work in into, into Microsoft Teams. So if we just start with kind of bringing your internet into Teams, um, intranets, uh, as, as it is part of the Microsoft 365 suite, what we find is a lot of organizations are now starting to build their own company intranets. Um, it's been a trend going on for years, but this is looking at developing more and more. And with Viva Connections, what we can start to do is bring your intranets into your team's environment. So as well as going into chat and do all your other things that you typically do on this platform, uh, people can now start to really easily find up-to-date news. Um, they can start to kind of search for resources across their organization. They can have conversations on there, um, as well as find compelling content that, that is important to them. Uh, but what we can also start to do is really just surface key information, um, look at kind of targeting different org um, audiences across our, our companies and making sure that we're providing tailored content as well. So it's not only being able to access resources easily, but actually be able to see stuff that is relevant to you. Uh, and with intranets as well, um, historically, it's been quite difficult to, to maybe access some of this information easily, unless you're on a specific device. But bringing it into Teams, it means all you now need to do is have the Teams app on your phone and suddenly you can get to all your organization resources, news, intranets directly from there. Uh, and it's given the comms team as well uh, an option to actually start to have to easily communicate out to people as well um, and actually start to create compelling communications and news and post videos and stuff for people to really easily access. Uh, the next part is, uh, so Viva Connections allows us to build uh, pretty cool uh, employee dashboards. So just thinking about all them different applications that we know people are using. Uh, with the dashboard, we can start to, to basically surface key applications and information to the people who do need it. So if there's any kind of apps that you use every single day, uh, instead of having to kind of go off to those apps or go and find them, we can now suddenly bring them into Microsoft Teams. And by going into your dashboard, you can actually very quickly find key information. You can access your applications. And we can look at extending that and actually integrating as well. So not everything has to be Microsoft. Maybe you're using an IT system to, to um, raise service test tickets. And typically, you'd have to go off to, to some portal to be able to do that. But with Viva Connections, what you can do is actually bring that into Microsoft Teams. So again, without having to go off to lots of multiple spaces, is you've now got one location where you literally can do everything. So, you know, from my from my teams on my desktop on my on my mobile phone, I can get into my internet, but then also I can go and raise a ticket at the service desk. I can book some holiday, you know, using my HR application. Um, I can see what tasks have been given me in to do. So the power really does come not just from 
putting links to different applications, but actually looking at how we can integrate with, you know, both Microsoft tools that we use every single day, but also maybe some third party tools that typically you wouldn't find on your internet or in a Microsoft environment. Uh, and the other great thing I forgot to mention, so with a dashboard as well, is everything is tailored. So it's not just about giving everyone exactly the same experience. It's about thinking maybe our office workers use completely different applications to what a frontline worker might use or someone who works out in the field. Or maybe someone in HR uses completely different tools to what someone in IT might use. So we can start to actually create a tailored experience so people are only seeing stuff which is relevant to them and everything is quite dynamic. Um, so again, it's, it's just giving that personal experience is making things much, much easier to do and for our jobs to become much easier as well. Uh, and the next part as well is all about, you know, actually boosting that communication across the organization. So uh, we get the feed. So this is where we can start to, some of those tools that we're already using, where we look to post news in our companies through SharePoint, or maybe we're using other tools like Yammer, Viva Engage to be able to have conversations with people. The feed, again, using a very similar kind of approach and technology to some of the other pillars in here, uh, we can start to share tailored content to people um, so that you can catch up on conversations, see your organization news. And again, all tailored based on what your interests are, what you follow, uh, what role you're in, uh, what SharePoint sites you might be a part of. Um, so that the experience, again, is tailored to you. If there's something you've missed, it can use kind of data on the graph to be able to, to pull them conversations or put them in front of you. Uh, but also gives, you know, people like HR, internal comms, people who might be wanting to put these comms out there and boost their viewership numbers. Uh, they can look at using this as a way to really kind of uh, boost certain stories um, and make sure that, that what they're putting out there, the readership is coming with it and people in the organization are able to, to see exactly what's going on. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about third party integration. So again, just, just to reiterate, that's kind of where the power does come with Beaver as well, is that it's a Microsoft tool, it's part of Teams and it works natively with most of the tools we use every single day. But when we can start to look at what are the other the other systems we use in our everyday job, what are those 51 applications that, that people are using every single day? And if we can start to build integrations with those, so literally, you know, you don't ever have to go into Teams to be able to do anything you want on there. You know, if you want to raise a ticket from there, if you want to book time off, if you want to log a timesheet, if we can start to build, you know, intelligent integrations with some of these, uh, we can really start to make people's lives much, much easier as well. So there's lots of uh, integrations that are already in place and partnerships with Microsoft, uh, but also we have the capabilities as well to be able to build custom ones, um, look at using the different APIs in existing systems to create uh, really nice uh, adaptive cards that, that people can access and interact with based on what their jobs require. <clears throat> and uh, just finally, um, before we do go into the demo, um, I know we've covered some of these. Um, so this really is just to kind of summarize the, the importance of it. But ultimately, the one thing we're trying to address is, is having one place for everything because there is just so much digital saturation and information out there. We're trying to think of ways that we can bring everything together. The tailored experience part, which is super important, um, especially, you know, in our world, we see that there's, there's quite a big difference between frontline workers and office workers sometimes. So, and also just people who could, might just work in different areas across the globe, different geographics, um, different role types. People want an experience that is unique to them. If we, if we give kind of everyone a one size fits all, then again, you're not really addressing the issue. You're just putting more saturation out there and making it difficult for people to do their jobs. So with Viva Connections, we can start to address some of that and actually start to, to create a nice tailored targeted experience for people. Uh, branding, which is obviously a huge thing. Um, you know, very easily we can create branded applications and a branded internet to ensure that organizations are getting that across too. Uh, we talked about custom components. And then finally, um, more of like a Microsoft 365 specific ones, but in the current climate where operational expenditure um, really is important for a lot of people um, and organizations who are looking to reduce costs um, or looking at getting more of their investments, using things like Viva Connections encourages the use of more of these tools that, that most organizations are currently paying for. So it's a way effectively of improving your return on investment and maybe looking at how you can reduce the use of some other tools as well. 
Cool. So we're going to be jumping into a demo in a sec. Uh, well, Chris, I'll set up. Um, so yeah, just really quick then. Uh, the scenario we're going to be showing be how we the on the desktop. Uh, we can look at this. They're going to want to kind of be connected to our their resources. And then just after that, we'll come into the mobile view where you can see you get a pretty slick experience, really easy. Um, but also get that kind of different table. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So uh, we're in Microsoft Teams. I think most people might recognize this. I know other tools are being used out there, but Teams really is the, uh, is the best one. You should all be using it. Um, so yeah, we're in Microsoft Teams. And one of the first things we're seeing with Lee, who's currently logged on the desktop, he's just coming to work, is the first thing he's found is right in the top there, where usually you've got your chat, your calls and everything. Uh, he has his company branded intranet. So this is where he's going to come to to find all his news, um, look for key links, navigate to his areas where he'll collaborate on documents. Uh, but what we're also starting to see as well, kind of things on the side, like our dashboard, which we can look at in a moment. Uh, but yeah, what we've done is this is a SharePoint intranet that's now been introduced into Teams, it's integrated, uh, and yeah, it's kind of been interfaced to there. So whereas historically, you might have to jump off to a browser or a different application, it's now kind of centralized all your other resources. Uh, but what we also have in here is a Viva dashboard, which has been set up. So this on the right over here, um, this is Lee's dashboard, and this is you know going to take him to all his key applications and the information he needs to be able to do his job. So just as a really quick example, uh, maybe he's you know we talked about integrating with third party solutions. Uh, we're in Teams, however, we can see we want to raise a ticket, and we've got a card there that says Service Now. So we can look at building that integration between the internet, between Viva connections and things like Service Now that allows Lee to go in, he can view kind of any open tickets he's got with the third party system, but he can also look at kind of raising new tickets as well. So typically whenever we would do this, we would jump off to another application to do that, but kind of, you know, using out of the box integrations as well, or looking at kind of how we can open up ABIs to expose data um, and then connect it into Viva Connections. We can start to do that stuff without even having to leave the internet. Uh, and the experience is really kind of slick across both connections and, and on the desktop and the mobile phone. So that's just an example. You might want to go in there and raise a ticket, but also we can pull in, you know, useful dynamic information again, which is important to us. Maybe he wants to see his, his payslip. Um, so you can just kind of jump in there and whatever payslip system they might be using, we can start to surface that information too. Uh, and then, yeah, lots of other kind of cool integrations. So being able to book time off, like we spoke about, these are some of kind of the really key probably most talked about integrations and applications we hear about. There are lots out there. There's lots of different ideas for different systems we can connect to. But, you know, things like I think the focus always needs to be around what actually is most important to us. And these are typically the stuff that organizations are trying to, to make easier. Um, so, yeah, I think that covers most things. So uh, some other cool things as well. Uh, we got an onboarding card there as well. So using things like Active Directory. And, you know, having the information we got stored in there, uh, maybe we want everyone to have the same onboarding experience. You know, that plays quite a big part as well in employee, employee experience these days. So what we can do is ensure that, you know, because Lee has recently joined the company, he's going to get a card that automatically says to him, you know, you're new here. Um, we want you to go through this onboarding material. Uh, we can look at surfacing that really easy as well. Um, typically, we, I think we've probably all seen inconsistent onboarding experiences throughout the years, different organizations, some haven't quite got it right yet. So this can try and help address some issues with things like that too. Uh, and yeah, there's lots of other useful information, stock price, things like that. Uh, shout out to the Accelerator team, WM Reply. We build our own custom cards. That's one of theirs. Um, so as well as that, we also have a bunch of other kind of internal or Microsoft 365 tools, which will all natively work out of the box. So. The good thing is a lot of these are really simple to get started and get using. Um, Viva Connections is something that's simple to set up. So we encourage organizations to do. Uh, looking at kind of those APIs that we might need to set up with external systems and third parties can sometimes be a, you know, a bit more difficult, but uh, it is all possible and those capabilities and the demand for that is growing. So 
yeah, as, as employee experience, really the message about it is as it gets more and more important, uh, we can look at kind of using tools like this to try and improve it. And should we jump over to Alex? So we are now on the mobile phone. Um, so this is Teams on the mobile and the experience again is very slick, very similar. Uh, but a frontline worker who maybe typically over, you know, previously in, in traditional years, it might be a lot more difficult for someone who's a frontline worker to be able to access company resources and key information. But now suddenly with the introduction of Teams and Viva Connections, uh, we can start to make some of this information way more accessible and easier to get to. So <clears throat> straight from the Teams app, again, we can see we've got our intranet icon. Uh, and the first thing we are kind of presented with is we've got, we got three different options. We've got our dashboard, our feed, and resources. So the dashboard, very similar to what we just saw on the desktop ability, is um, we can see uh, Alex, who is a frontline worker, uh, because, because they're a frontline worker, they work on shift work, they're now starting to see slightly different cards based on what their role actually is. So whereas Lee wouldn't have a shift card because they work nine to five, uh, Alex is able to come in, clock in, uh, and they're seeing cards and having an experience which is tailored to them. So yeah, things like being able to clock in, uh, having dynamic information so where they can see their own pay slip, uh, and a couple of other really similar cards in there, as well as a couple of different ones. So uh, instead of the onboarding card, we've now got some learning hub stuff. So we were trying to like boost trade in and have, give kind of frontline workers the ability to learn. So using kind of other tools in Viva or maybe a third party LMS or something, we can build those integrations that, that allow that to be really easy. And again, before this for frontline workers, they were kind of maybe forgotten about and didn't kind of get this experience or this access to information, but it's now suddenly become much, much easier over time. Uh, cool. And I think there might be a couple of tasks in there as well um, to do, but otherwise we can move on to the feed and kind of look about what our experience is. So uh, we're seeing some other, some other applications in here across the Microsoft uh, stack and, and the Viva suite. So I won't go into too much, but we're seeing things like Beaver Engage posts coming in. So maybe people that, that Alex follows uh, or any communities they're a part of, they're now starting to see those conversations happening. And really easily from their mobile, they can actually start to talk to people, interact with them posts, be a part of the, the conversations happening in their organization, which again, when you kind of look back in the stats, how people didn't feel like they were part of news or didn't understand the news going on. Uh, and typically, you know, traditionally, frontline workers are probably one of the more harder um, groups to reach in projects, especially when it comes to things like news. We can now start to make lives much easier and, and interact with them this way. But yeah, any key information, news, conversations, uh, or videos kind of going out across the organization, uh, we can now start to really present that to them. And then finally, we've got our resources where Alex, if they'd like to, can start to kind of navigate across the internet and, and look at some key pages to find Again, documents, news, resources, all quite easily, um, whereas historically that might have been a bit more difficult to do. Cool. Did I forget anything? Very good. Very good. Lovely. Hey, turn it off. Cool. Okay. And try it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give it an introduction. And now go. Chris Toss for case studies. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, so we'll jump into a few case studies now and what we have done at WM with some of our clients um, and some of the core stuff we have already created within Viva Connections. So the first one is on Lloyds Bank, and this was an active rollout of the entire Viva suite. And it has been confirmed by Microsoft that it was the largest sale uh, worldwide um, of Viva. So um, that's really important for us. And it, it's been a, a very long journey um, to, to roll all the modules. Um, and as we said, Viva brings everything together and we're really trying to bring all of those 51 um, business applications within Viva 
but sometimes it can take time because clients don't always want to transform everything to Eva. So we might try to find other ways um, of doing that. And I'll be showcasing one of the um, examples uh, in another case study where they, they wanted uh, to not create everything customly, but have all the links there for their employees to go to the um, to the, all the different applications they'll be using. Uh, the next one is was with Imperial Brands, and that was uh, a custom card we created, and that was with Workday. Um, and that was to, for all of the employees to be able to see um, all their upcoming holiday bookings, anything they've booked before, um, and how many days they've got um, left. It is uh, in the pipeline to actually um, customize this even further and taking it a step further um, and actually being able to book time off from, from the card because at the moment you can only see um, any days you have booked already. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to, to um, creating that later on. The next one is with Halion, and it is the one I mentioned earlier that I'll be showcasing. Um, so as you can see here at the very top on the right, the little black boxes, um, those are actually links that take you to, to your different applications. So they don't want anything custom made um, and they don't want them to actually um, send any requests with from Viva. They just wanted a, a centralized area where, where employees can actually go and find the links to those applications nice and easily. Um, and finally, uh, Orlando Magic, another very exciting project, which was for the, for the team players. Um, and what we created here was with, was everything within the M365 suite. So we were using SharePoint, um, so no third party integrations, um, nothing new to us, but it was very exciting because we, we it was a very exciting project actually because um, we, we were able to create a card where they could see their upcoming schedule, their next um, trip, where are they flying from, inbound and outbound travels, um, and any uh, schedule on where they're going to have their meals or where, where their next game is. Um, yeah, this is all about the case studies. And I'd like to go into a quick Q&A. Um, if you do have any questions, we'd love to address them. If you can address them. Um, so I guess my question is to you, Mike. If I am a content creator, how easy is it for me to target content to those different audiences? Uh, so there is... Uh, kind of some prerequisites ideally you need in place. So the way people are targeted is based on kind of your profile. So like some of the examples I gave earlier could be your, you know, your ge geography, um, what type of role you're in. So it uses Active Directory in the background. So ultimately, as long as you've got clean Active Directory, you've got the right data in place, you've got the right groups, and it becomes very easy to target. As a content creator, it's literally a case of you just type in the name of the group you want to target. So super, super easy. But the important thing, there is a prerequisite of ensuring that the infrastructure and the data is set up right in the first place. Yeah. <clears throat> How does the Viva Suite supplement the physical incentives that companies use to improve and boost employee experience? Physical as in? Like in well-being the... days or socials? Um. Good question. Uh, I mean, I guess ultimately, if, I mean, if I think about like even just ways we use it, it's kind of, you know, you can do things like sharing events and promoting stuff. And you, we encourage people to use these tools, not just to kind of focus purely on work stuff, but think about what stuff could we be doing outside of work to, to boost well-being, to come together and work on things. Um, you know, we are, we're big advocates of things like Libra Engage, where we share a lot of different events and stuff with each other talk about some of the stuff we're doing to encourage other people to do it so there is that aspect of it as well um yeah and then ultimately it's just ensuring that we can yeah on the other side then i guess a big part of it is trying to reach those people that are a bit more disconnected and maybe sometimes don't have the physical opportunity so it's also addressing kind of that side as well
We have one question from uh, someone joining online and is asking how hard is to create Viva connection cards? Great questions. <laughs> um, so there's, there's different types. You've got uh, lots which are available kind of out of the box. And those ones are super simple. You can set up a dashboard nice and quick. Um, Typically, like Chris also was saying, we've got some organizations who go with a simple route like Alien, where they just want things like link set up and that's super easy. But typically, I think the way we tend to approach it is have a roadmap where we'll start off with a simple one before we get into development. Uh, I think one of the recent ones we did was that Imperial Brands ones that we talked about, which was a completely custom card. And I want to say it was something like 20 days effort. I've, <laughs> some in the audience are saying higher, but yeah, maybe 30 days. I don't know. But yeah, sounds good. Um, so yeah, we it really is an area as well still being explored quite a lot. Um, and, and the requirement for it is definitely building and building. But yeah, from our previous example, it was around 20 to 30 days. Okay, thank you. We have another question. Is to realize integration, uh, yeah, to realize integration with external applications, is it necessary the development or only the configuration? With what, sorry? Um, let me show you. I understand that. Um, so it's, it's a bit of both. Um, so yeah, I, I think the question they're asking is, is it just like simply conf is configuration job to be able to connect to, to a third party solution, always some development required. Um, the cards themselves, uh, you use JSON primarily to develop them. And then the actual integration themselves, um, again, looking at just examples we've done, you're looking at building something like an Azure app that's able to kind of expose information and kind of from, from the other third party system you're trying to get it from. Um, and then it's putting it together. So it's not a configuration job, unfortunately. Um, for the Microsoft 365 suite, it's configuration. If it's outside, there's some development involved. <clears throat> okay, thank you. We have another question. What's the biggest single benefit you will say clients could take from launching Viva Connections? <clears throat> biggest benefit. Um, I mean, I, I guess opinions could change because there's lots of different benefits it can bring. Um, for me, I just think it's the ease of access of, of resources and information. It's the fact that, like I said, suddenly now, you know, just installing Teams on your mobile phone doesn't mean you can just message people and call them. It means you have access to your entire organization's resources. If they've spent the time building a good intranet and putting good information architecture in place, which actually is probably a really good point to mention as well, is that it's not just switching it on. You need to have a good information architecture behind this work does need to be done to build a good company intranet. Um, you know, we talked about having a clean active directory and good data to be able to target stuff. So once you've got all that in place, it's great. Um, but then it's, yeah, it's how easily people can actually access that. Then it's the fact that anyone can jump on their phone and you can get 20 documents, any news, any application that, that is crucial to you. So I think it's just suddenly making people's lives much easier to get to get the information. Cool. Got one more question. Is there any like, technical or recommended limit on how big and complex those cards can be? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think we push the limit <laughs> on how big a card can be. Um, I, I'm not going to try and give you a pretend answer. I, I don't know what the limitation would be in terms of how big a card is. Um, yeah, ultimately, the key things is you've got to expose the data, but then, which usually can be quite easy, but then the, actually developing the card and getting that information onto the card and, and action and stuff, that's where it gets quite a bit more complex and difficult. Um, I haven't heard of limitations yet, but yeah, we might not have pushed it enough yet to get there. Thank you. Cool. In that case, if there's no questions, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining the room and online. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And there's going to be some more Viva webinars coming up over the next few weeks and months. So if you get a chance to check Norris, sign up and join them because there'll be lots of cool stuff coming out. Thank you.